You're watching Good Day OK. Welcome into Good Day OK. Here's a live look outside at that foggy first Monday morning of 2023. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm Jameson Keefover. We're following some breaking news for you, but first we're bringing your traffic and weather together every 10 minutes. So let's get right over to Elliot Wilson. Yeah, we got that dense fog advisory that goes until 10 o'clock this morning because of this stalled frontal boundary. That's about halfway across the state right now. Not to mention our next weather maker is on the approach at the moment. Dense fog advisories go until 10 o'clock this morning, but it may take longer than 10 o'clock for this fog to clear up. And this includes quite a few counties stretching from the north even down to the south and out to the west. And of course, the metro is included in that. In fact, the metro is where the lowest visibilities are right now. A one mile visibility coming out of the Will Rogers Airport. We've got some low visibilities down to the south, and now they're really starting to drop off off to the west as well. So this fog is going to be sticking with us as we head throughout the next several hours. Rain chances to kick in later on today. Some storms could be on the strong side during the late hours of the afternoon, but after today, things will be nice and quiet as we head throughout the rest of the week. Temperatures will hit the low 60s at lunchtime. That's when those showers will start working in from the west. Around 1 to 2 o'clock is when this line of rain will start moving into the metro area. But after 2 o'clock, that's when the isolated storm chances will start to kick in as long as well as the chances for uh, stronger storms. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Let's get a Pike Pass steer clear traffic update. Everybody, good morning. Starting off taking a look at your drive times, letting you know that there just hasn't been any delays. That's the same song we're singing here at the 830 hour. I-35, 40 and 44 looking really good. But want to go ahead and show you this house fire that your Victor Park is at. This is Southwest 25th Street, just east of Douglas. If you have to take that way, you can take 29th Street, Southwest 29th Street. That's going to be a good detour because so many emergency personnel are in that area. You want to give them time to get that all cleaned up for you. But your Pike Pass steer clear traffic camera is looking at I-40 and Agnew. It's a smooth commute. Guys, never wait more than 10 minutes for your traffic and weather together. And we're following that breaking news where firefighters put out a house fire in southwest Oklahoma City. Victor Park joined us live from that scene. So, Victor, do we have any new information? Well, Jameson, we are showing you a new perspective of this uh, fire right now. As you see behind me, there is a very it is a very active scene. All these firefighters really working together to roll up these hoses. But let's pan to the right and show you the home because you're going to notice there are a lot of broken windows. This is why firefighters believe uh, someone must have broken inside and was living in there when this fire started. But when they arrived, no one was inside of the home. So fortunately, also no one was hurt, but they did see a lot of flames, a lot of smoke coming out of the rear side of the house. Of course, those firefighters working quickly to knock it down. And now they're in the process of really wrapping the scene up over here on Douglas and Southwest 25th. And by the way, hopping on uh, what uh, Kayla was talking about, the street closures, not just Southwest 25th, but also Douglas. So you'll want to take a uh, Western Avenue. That's going to be your best bet if you want to avoid all this. Back to you. Thank you, Victor. Well, let's take a look at what's happening across Oklahoma this morning. A fight between teenagers in Ida Bell ends with one dead and two hurt. Investigators say on Saturday, one of the teens retrieved a long gun and shot into the air. A group of teens then got into a truck and police say the suspect fired at the truck. One was killed. Another was grazed by a bullet. Well, the third is being treated at a local hospital. Police arrested the suspected shooter. OSBI is working with the FBI Ida Bell Police and the Choctaw Nation. The investigation falls under the McGirt Supreme Court ruling. And a Tulsa police officer and light horse police officer are on administrative leave after a suspect is dead following an officer involved shooting. Investigators say the incident started early Saturday morning at a traffic stop with the light horse officer. And they say the suspect drove away and Tulsa police were called to help and were able to stop them. Investigators say the suspect got out of the car with a pistol and shotgun, ignoring police commands. Both officers shot at the suspect, killing him. 
and one person is dead after a crash in Cimarron County. It happened early Sunday morning around 1:14 a.m. about seven miles east of Boise City in the Panhandle. Oklahoma Highway Patrol says a pickup truck was headed east on US 412 when the driver Bobby Lee Treat went off the road and hit a tree. Treat died at the scene. Troopers say he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Investigators are looking into the call. And one person is dead after a crash in Stevens County. Oklahoma Highway Patrol says this happened Saturday about half a mile south of Velma. Troopers say two cars were involved. The driver and passenger of one car were not hurt, but the driver of the second car died at the scene. Troopers say the driver in the second car wasn't wearing a seatbelt. They're investigating what caused the crash. And we've got your back with a reminder. City offices for the city of Moore are closed today. Trash will be picked up on Wednesday. If you have questions, call 405-793-5070. And Yukon City offices will also be closed today. Trash will be picked up tomorrow. And the transfer station and recycling center is also closed. It'll reopen tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And today is the Tournament of Roses Parade and the Donate Life Float will feature an Oklahoma teenager who died four years ago. Morgan Flynn's floral portrait will fill one of the 44 openings on this Chinese street dragon. The Tushka teen had two double lung transplants because of her cystic fibrosis. She was just days away from her 17th birthday when she died. But her dad says the transplants bought them some precious time. We had Morgan for an extra 10 years, basically, because of those organ donations that people made to her. She always remembered her donors. She wanted us to know that if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have had her. And Morgan was able to donate her heart valves and her corneas, and so we got to return the favor, hopefully, to some other family, you know, like was given to us. The Tournament of Roses Parade happens this morning at 10. Well, looking ahead, the state will almost have an execution every month, starting with Scott Eisenberg on January 12th. Eisenberg was found guilty in the 2003 murders of AJ and Patsy Contrell. He requested clemency, but last month the Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board voted to move forward with the execution. Eisenberg's execution will mark the start of a scheduled execution nearly every month this year for a total of 10. How many times? do we have to urge our justice system to do its job? Scott's conditions are no different than any other Oklahomans living within the criminal legal system of Oklahoma. Scott is suffering at the hands of our injust system. State Attorney General John O'Connor stood by the decision to move forward with Eisenberg's execution, saying in a statement that the pardon and parole board made the correct decision in denying the request for clemency. The Moore City Council will meet tomorrow evening at 630. Council members will consider approving an agreement to provide dispatch services to the Norman Regional Hospital Authority for emergency medical calls. They'll also consider amending the budget for additional sales tax and increase the fleet maintenance budget. They will also hold a public hearing for a proposed curbside recycling program. And the Chickasaw City Council will also meet tomorrow. Council members will discuss whether to accept a grant worth over $2 million for employee, citizen, and volunteer safety and medical supplies. They'll also discuss a safe routes to school policy, which will improve the city's commitment to providing safe routes for students to walk or bike to school. That meeting starts at 6.30 tomorrow evening. People living in Stillwater have a chance to meet local legislators. The Stillwater Public Library is hosting a Meet Your Legislators event next Thursday, January 12th from 5 to 7 p.m. Representative Trish Ranson and Senator Chuck Hall are expected to attend along with Stillwater Mayor Will Joyce. New film projects are coming to the Cherokee Nation Film Studio in Owasso. Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell shared information on his Facebook page, and he says the space is equipped with industry-leading hardware and software. The state's film industry has created 10,000 jobs and $240 million in revenue over the last 18 months. Off to a bit of a rough start this morning. We have dense fog advisories in and around the metro area and even for some of our other counties as well until about 10 a.m. Let's get you guys out there to see what's going on. Very hazy looking on our sky cams looking across the metro right now. Like I said, those go until 10 o'clock this morning, those dense fog advisories, and those include quite a few counties even stretching out west of I-35 as well. And visibilities all across the board are pretty low, even across a good chunk of the state. One mile visibility coming out of the Will Rogers Airport and pretty 
pretty much our entire viewing area seeing some uh, pretty low visibilities right now. Once we get to midday, the fog will start to die down. But then as we head into the afternoon, rain chances will go up. But around 10 to 11 o'clock, we'll start to see some rain move in over our far western counties, not getting to the metro until about 1 to 2 o'clock as we head towards the afternoon. Right around 1 to 2 o'clock, this will be crossing the I-35 corridor, after which we'll start to see some isolated storms developing along that line and Pottawatomie and Seminole counties have the best chances for seeing a couple of strong storms later on this afternoon, but otherwise the severe weather is going to stay east of our viewing area. Low 60s once we get to lunchtime, highs will be in the mid 60s this afternoon. Your Pike Pass steer clear traffic update, everybody. Good morning again. Want to remind you, just as Victor Park said, though this house fire is in the ending stages of being cleaned up on Southwest 25th Street, just east of Douglas, that if you need to go that way, you take those detours, Southwest 29th Street. And Victor said, of course, instead of taking Douglas because that is closed off as well, you can take Western Avenue. Other than that, it is looking really clear as it has been for most of the morning. Most of your earlier crashes have already already been cleared or in the final stages of being cleared. And of course, your drive times not being affected. Your Pike Pass steer clear traffic camera is looking at I-40 and Air Depot. Look at that. I'm telling you right now, we love to see this smooth commute. Guys, never wait more than 10 minutes for your traffic and weather together. Thanks, Kayla. Well, your bad eyesight isn't just hereditary. But look at this new study proving what else can be causing bad eyesight. And let's take a live look outside. It's a foggy start to your 2023 work week, but we're keeping you updated. You're watching Good Day OK.